page 18, a second waltz with you. Introducing more stuff here. Top of the page, they talk about intervals, seconds and thirds. An interval is the distance between two notes. All right. For instance, and in music, we don't have a zero. You start with one. If I go from here to here, that is a second, an interval of a second. It's one, two. If I go uh, interval a third would be one, two, three. That's an interval of a third. I can start on any note on here. And we're only using white notes right now, okay? You start on any note and count that, and I'm going to get those intervals. If I start here, I go one, two, three. It's an interval of a third. Uh, I could count down. Counting down is dangerous. I'll talk more about that in the future. You know, that's still an interval of a third, but if possible, go up. And that's what they're talking about on intervals. At the bottom of the page, they introduce the repeat sign and the tie. The repeat sign, you see at the end of this piece, simply means go back and play it again. There is a thing called a reverse repeat sign, which means something else. Right now, a repeat sign means go back to the beginning and play it again. That's what a repeat sign is. Later on, we're going to adjust that definition just a little bit. A tie, if you'll notice, looks exactly the same as a slurp. It's the same symbol. Uh, all these curved lines in this piece, as you see, are slurs except the last two measures. That's a tie. So what is the difference? Huh. It's confusing. A tie, by definition, is between two notes. I keep forgetting to say it's only two notes. You can't tie three notes. It's two notes, and they have to be the same note. You can't change notes. So in the first measure, that's not a tie because the C and the D are different notes. If they were both Ds, it would be a tie. So it's it's a slur. At the end, a tie, those are, that's a tie because only two notes are involved. I know I'm playing three notes here, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking going horizontally. There's only two notes involved, okay? doesn't matter how many notes you're playing in a chord. It's not important. It's going across. There's two notes involved. On a tie, what you do is you play the first note and hold it down through the, throughout the whole tie. So in this case, the next to the last measure, we're going to play the dotted half note. We're going to hold that down for six counts, because there's two dotted half notes here. So it's six counts. So we don't play the second dotted half note again. We just hold down the first one that long. Uh, that's what we're doing here. That's a tie, huh? You can have lots of fun later on getting all confused about that. It's wonderful. Now. They give you dynamics here, louds and softs and all that. The beginning, there's a P. That stands for piano or soft. So you're going to start out soft. I don't know what soft is. It's soft to you. Just play it soft. What you think soft is. Then in the last measure of the first line, you get an MP. That is moderately soft. Okay? So it's a little louder than soft. Not much. Just a little louder than soft. How much a little louder? I don't know. You decide. Then in the second line, fourth measure, you back down to soft. And you stay that way. So this is basically a nice soft piece. Let's try this out and see what happens. Uh, you're starting out with the right hand here. And the left hand is here. wonderful, don't it? It's not going to stay there. If you look at the last measure of the first line, the right hand goes up to here. And the first measure of the second line, the left hand goes up to here. In the second line, in the fourth measure over, the right hand has to move so you're back where the index finger can play the D doesn't tell you that in the music, so you have to realize, oh, this is the same as the beginning, so I'm going to use the same finger. 
and the second finger on the last measure, the left hand, second finger, just like it is at the beginning again. Now, when you get to the last line, third measure over in the right hand, they show you a fourth finger on the G. So you got to move again, up one, so your fourth finger is on the G. And for the last two measures, the left hand has to move up, so your fifth finger and third finger can play the F and the A. So you got to come up here. And again, when you're playing this chord, put your hand in that position and just drop the whole hand down. Don't try and do it with the fingers. Oof. So your hands are moving around a little bit. You move the hand before you need air. In the second line, when you're moving the hands, you're going to move them while you're playing the note in the previous measure. Right? So it's there ready for you. You've got to do that. They give you plenty of time to move the hands. Not all songs do that. You have to look a piece of music over before you play it in many cases. Uh, sight reading is when you're sitting down and you're playing music you've never seen before. You just play it. You're reading it at sight. But really to learn a piece of music, you've got to look it over first. You've got to figure out where the hands are moving and what fingers you're going to use where. So let's try this out and see what happens. This is in 3-4 time. So the measures only get three counts. So I'm only going to give you three counts, and we'll come in together. Put your hands where they go. Right hand here, left hand here. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Three counts. One, ready, go. Three. 